Today it gives us pleasure to uh, welcome and introduce uh, Janelle Morgan, Director of the Habitat for Humanity, one of our favorite offertories at Foof. And uh, a little background on Janelle. Through her career in banking and lending, Janelle Morgan saw the need for affordable housing and was very excited to join Florence Habitat for Humanity in January of 2018. She has always been involved in each community where she has resided, giving countless hours serving on boards, committees, and helping to fill a need when she saw one. Janelle is passionate about reuse, recycling, and upcycling. In quotes, let's reuse instead of putting it in the local landfill. She has two golden retriever puppies who are walking the dunes and playing in the ocean. She is happy to be living back on the Oregon coast and is hopeful about making a difference in the Florence community. And boy, has she ever already. Wow. <laughs> Please welcome Janelle Morgan. Thank you. Walk yesterday, and we could not have been more blessed with the weather yesterday. Yeah. Uh, if anything, the kite flyers were hoping for a little more wind, which is not a common thing on the Oregon coast. So um, we were amazingly blessed yesterday, and we need the rain, so I guess we're blessed again today. So Habitat's vision is a world where everyone has a decent place to live. And our mission statement, and I'm pretty passionate about our mission statement, is seeking to put God's love into action. Habitat for Humanity brings people together to build homes, community, and hope. And that's really what we're going to be talking about today, is bringing people together and building homes. Everyone thinks of Habitat as building homes, and that that's what our role is. It is, but that's only one piece. It's only a very small piece of what we do. So first we're going to do a little bit of Habitat trivia. We'll go through this rather quickly. <laughs> so, where was the concept for Habitat for Humanity conceived? In Georgia, it was. It's in. Um, it was on um, Koinonia Farms in just outside of America, Georgia. And if you've never researched Koinonia Farms, I highly encourage you to to um, go and do a little bit of research. It's pretty interesting. Who founded Habitat for Humanity? Millard and Linda Fuller. We'll get to the whole Jimmy Carter thing here in just a second. Where was the first Habitat for Humanity house built? Georgia. Congo. Habitat for, Habitat for Humanity is, was never intended to be a United States company. Habitat for Humanity was intended to build homes internationally. And some volunteers went to Congo and built a home, and they went back and built a second home, and they said, you know what? This concept would work in my own community. I still get chills every time I tell this. Uh, and if I start crying, I apologize, because I, like I said, I get a little passionate. Um, but... Um, so there were some people who took it back and said, you know, we can do this in our own communities. And they started in Georgia, and it has spread throughout the United States. We now have 1,400 Habitat for Humanities throughout the United States. So what marked the first year of Habitat? It was 1976. Hmm. How many countries does Habitat build in today? 70 countries. <laughs> um, since our founding in, in 1976, Habitat for Humanity has helped how many people build or improve uh, the place they call home? Thousands. More than 22 million, and these stats are over a year old now. <laughs> Okay, so, little local statistics. How many homes have we built here in Florence? 20. 20. Very good. 
We've built 28, we're on number 29 right now. Nice. Which we will be doing the dedication on. We just talked about the dedication earlier, um, so I'll skip that. How many families have we placed here? And this is where sometimes people go, your numbers are never consistent. And it's like, nope, they, they are, there's a reason why. How many families have we placed in a home here in Florence? 31. And that is because we have first right on all of our houses and we purchase our homes back from the homeowner. We refresh the house is what I like to call it. And then we place another another family in the home. So we just purchased a home back, oh, not this last Friday, but the Friday before it closed escrow. We're gonna be refreshing that home so we're in the family selection process right now of selecting a new family for that home. So this number will go from 31 to 33 fairly quickly. Why does the first family they, they were originally from Montana, and unfortunately her sister was diagnosed with stage 4 so cancer. It's, it's because they, yeah, it's not, we didn't foreclose on the property or anything. It was a very positive thing in their, in their life. Um, they have chosen to move back and be with family, and so we purchased the home back from them. Okay. What are the biggest myths about Habitat? There you go. That it's free. That's the number one myth is that we give the homes away. We do not give the homes away. We actually sell them at fair market value. We do a first mortgage that is affordable for the family and a silent second mortgage on the, the home um, to bring it up to the full market value. So when we sell a home in your neighborhood, it does not bring down the value of your neighborhood because the recorded value that that home was sold at was, is at the fair market value. What's myth number two? That Jimmy Carter founded Habitat for Humanity. <laughs> um, Jimmy Har does anyone know when Jimmy Carter actually got involved with Habitat for Humanity? It was after his presidency. It was not until 1984 that he actually became involved with Habitat for Humanity. So the organization had been around. I, I credit him that I believe that our success has a lot to do with him. And Habitat International actually has a division that is, they just changed the name from the Jimmy Carter to Jimmy and Rosalind because she is also so active and they felt that she needed the recognition as well. So I was excited to see them do that. So it was after his presidency. Who do we serve? We serve families who have lived or worked in the Sayusla Fire District for at least one year. So if somebody is brand new to our community, unfortunately they do have to be here for a year before they qualify for our program. Um, families must learn, earn less than 80% of the median income. For a family of four, median income for Lane County is $51,900. There are so many people who do qualify for Habitat and don't believe that they do because they don't believe that they're low income. But by statistics, they are considered low income. So we're trying to help spread that word. Um, prospective Habitat homeowners must demonstrate a need for safe, affordable housing. Need may include excessive rent. And Habitat classifies anything as more than 30% of your income as excessive. Um, Inadequate housing, overcramped living quarters. So those are just some of the definitions. Once selected, the Habitat homeowners must partner with us through the process. The partnership includes performing sweat equity, so they actually come out and help drive nails, paint. They help work on their homes um, to build their own home. And um, the sweat equity can also, they have to do 100 hours on the home. Uh, depending on if it is a single adult in the family, they have to do 300 hours of sweat equity. If there are two adults in the family, they have to do 500 hours of sweat equity. And so those hours can be done through our restore, they can be done through the office, they can be done through fundraisers, they can be done through their church. Um, we have ways that they can reach their sweat equity, but at least 100 hours does have to be spent on the home or on another home. If we have multiple homes going at the same time, it could be on a second home or on someone else's home. Um, Homeowners must be willing to, to make the, the mortgage payment. So they have to have some income to be able to make the, the uh, mortgage payment. So to carry out our vision, we partner with individuals and families from application through construction when the keys are handed over to the family and for the first year of home ownership. So a lot of these families don't have a support system. 
And so we try to be there to be their support system. If they've never owned a home, we can give them the greatest homeowner manual in the world, but if you've never cleaned gutters, you don't know what it means that it's time to clean your gutters. And I'll tell you, I have a little personal experience with it is that I went to use the weed eater. I haven't used a weed eater in probably 20 or 30 years, and I'm sure my neighbors had a really good laugh at me because I was out there, and it just, it really sunk at home to me that this is what our homeowners go through is, you know, we, we give them the tools and we think, oh, we've made you successful. You know, we've, we've given you the tools to make you successful. But if you're not really there to help hold their hand and to help walk them through how to start the weed eater that's been sitting in the garage for the last six months, um, <laughs> you know, those things can be really challenging for people. And unfortunately, sometimes we have to have some conversations that aren't so pleasant with the homeowners. That it's like, it's really wonderful that you now have a home and you had a barbecue with your, with your neighbors. But you have to go pick up your beer cans. You can't leave them laying in the front yard. That's not okay. And so we have, we're trying to have those conversations with the homeowners. I get phone calls all the time because someone in the community thinks that I need to go tell them that they need to do X. Mm -hmm. I am the mortgage holder. I can suggest what they do. I have no more right than Oregon Pacific Bank does to tell you how to maintain your home. And so that's a little misconception out there also. Uh, we are trying to work with the family so that they do understand that it is a projection of themselves. It's a projection of our community. When you come and you help build that house, you have a vested interest in that house. And when that homeowner doesn't take care of that home, it hurts your heart. And so we're really trying to work with the family so that they understand that. Oops, Ooh, I don't know what I just did there. Um, by working out with us from the beginning, I went through all this, I, I kind of got off on my own little tangents here. Um, it's an in-depth process. It's not something that happens quickly for the families. We do also require that they go through financial literacy training. And there's classes that they have to take so that they understand. It's amazing when you sit down and you talk to some of these families, they have no idea what a budget is. And one of our homeowners came in and she needed $75. The class that she was required to take for a down payment assistance was $75. And she didn't have the $75. And so I had to have the conversation with her that was like, you know what? We need, to have a, we need to have a talk because every single time you walk in here, you have Dutch Brothers in your hand. How much do you spend a month getting coffee? And she gave me a number of what she bought, and then we talked about how many days a week she went to Dutch Brothers and how many, you know, what she's ordering, and sometimes she goes for her daughter. And so, you know, I ran some quick calculations, and she said, there's no way I spend that. I just used your numbers, and this is, this is what you're spending but yet you don't have the money to make it through the month. And so again, those aren't the fun conversations. That's not the fun part of going out and driving nails and painting and, and doing some of those fun things. But that's where we're trying to make the difference because if we can make a difference with that one person and they can go tell somebody that they work with or they can go tell one of their friends or somebody that they go to church with, we can start impacting this community. So benefits of home ownership. Um, reduced health problems by limiting exposures to allergens, neurotoxins, infectious diseases, and stressors. Frees up family resources for nutritional food and health care expenditures. Contributes to health improvements by building greater self-esteem, sense of security, and control. Creates a healthy uh, network of neighborly people. So again, we want them to feel that they're a part of this community. When families in our community have the ability to build a better life story, it benefits everyone. Housing may seem like one piece of the puzzle, but it leads to more complete, stable picture for our schools, workplaces, and neighborhoods. And recently I was talking to a potential donor, and he said, you know, um, he said, I, I think that what you guys do is wonderful, but you impact one family a year. And I said, no, we don't. We don't impact one family a year because while we may only place one family in a home per year, one to two families, um, we're impacting them because now they become better employees. They're not stressed out, they're not as sick as often, they're not calling in sick as often. It's a proven fact that their children are better students in school. And um, Habitat homeowners have a 92% graduation rate in the state of Oregon. I just got the new statistics yesterday. Wow. Or on Friday. <clears throat> My days kind of run together sometimes. 
So um, we beat this, the state average by 16% for our homeowners. Yay. So we're not just impacting one person because that's impacting the other students in the classroom. That's impacting their teachers. It's impacting our community as a whole. So graduation rates, uh, childhood good health, net family, the, the net worth of the family. It decreases childhood behavioral problems. If they know where they're gonna sleep tonight, I know that I have my own bedroom and I'm gonna be able to go to sleep tonight. I'm not couch surfing, I'm not living with this relative, that relative, um, maybe living in a trailer that leaks. We have our Ramps and Rails program, which is um, an aging in place program. And the idea is that we will build ramps into homes and um, we can place handrails. We had a gentleman who, who contacted me and he owned his home. He had a really bad back, he's a veteran. And the veterans have a ramp program that it's very difficult to qualify for. And you pretty much have to have a prosthetic device. He has a bad back and so he didn't qualify for a ramp. He was living in his van because he couldn't get up and down the stairs to get into his own house. Oh he was barbecuing in the backyard because he couldn't get into his kitchen to cook. This is somebody living right here in our own community. So I just kind of want to share how we impact the community. Uh, first off, my board of directors. These are my board of directors. In the picture is my executive team, you may know them, Mike Carpel Road, Alice Burns, Eric Snedden, and Mary Beers. They're also all very active in the community. The staff at Habitat for Humanity, we do have some paid staff. The majority of our work is done by volunteers. I'm the executive director. Lori Grimmett is helping us with um, office assisting and with uh, resource development. She's out really seeking some grant for, for us right now. Ivy Rash is an administrative assistant, and that's just kind of a fancy title for whatever needs to be done. Uh, Lloyd Dibbell is our brand new Restore Manager. If you have not had the opportunity to, to stop in and meet him, please do. Stop in and introduce yourself. And Lyle Be Bedelu Bedelu you I have a hard time saying that, is our driver, and is just he's just an amazing guy. He's so dedicated to our organization. If you see him, shake his hand and thank him for everything that he does for us. He is only guaranteed 16 hours a week, but any time that we need help, he's there. And um, we've been running really short-staffed. He's been working full-time, and it just, it just brings tears to my eyes how dedicated people are. And yesterday, I have to say, in this world of you know Me Too and we're not supposed to touch each other, we're not supposed to hug, at the end of each walk, Lyle and Ivy were standing there talking, and before they left, they hugged each other. And I thought, you know what? This is what I want to see. This is what I want from my staff. I want them to be comfortable enough and to feel enough like a family that that's how they end their day. Our restore. So um, I am pretty passionate about recycling and keeping things out of our landfill. Last year, we diverted 379,872 pounds from the landfill. That's just here in Florence. Wow. Wow. Um, we've reset our restore, so if you haven't been in lately, go in and take a look. Things that we did new last year, we started carrying home decor. Mm -hmm. um, we started offering estate cleanouts, bottle and can recycling. We have a bin out back. If you don't want to recycle your own bottles and cans, just drop them in there. Um, in about a six-month period, we made about $4,500 off of that program. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty important to us now. We started selling new paint supplies. So we have new paint brushes, paint rollers and they're at a very reasonable cost. Habitat for Humanity goes out and, and seeks in-kind donations for us, and they are now seeking companies that will uh, sell to us at, like this company that we buy our paint supplies from is the same company that sells to Lowe's. Um, but they sell, when Lowe's buys, they have to buy, you know, 900 paintbrushes at a time. Well, 900 paintbrushes would probably last me for the next 10 years, and so I can buy 48 paintbrushes at a time. 24 paintbrushes at a time. So um, we started offering recycling bins for the for community events. This is actually a Lane County program, but if you wanted these recycling bins, you had to drive to Eugene, pick up the bins, 
have your event, and then have them back usually on Monday, usually within 24 hours of your event, you had to have them back in Eugene. So they had them available for the next program. Mm -hmm. So when I found out about this, I said, you know what, I've got a back room with a little bit of, of storage back there. And so we brought over about a dozen of the recycling bins here so that people from Florence can come in, they can check these bins out, take them, use them at your event, recycle the bottles and cans. If you don't want to recycle the bottles and cans, bring them back to us and we'll recycle them for you. It's free of charge. And so um, any events that are going on, please contact me and let's get these used. And we started carrying some Habitat wear as well. We do upcycled art contests. We went to a lot of that, but those are those are a lot of fun. Uh, so again, our mission: seeking to put God's love into action. Habitat for Humanity brings people together to build homes, community, and hope. Am I out of time? Because I I like to talk. Um, <laughs> building homes and hope. So last year we did. I am out. Okay. Yeah, a few more seconds. Okay. So um, part of the ways that we we build hope is Christy was living in Section Eight housing. And her home is one of the homes that we recycled. So it was a great story for the family. The family was able, they outgrew the home that they were living in. Habitat homes are very small. If you haven't been in them, I encourage you to come to our home dedication so you can see the homes. It is, our uh, three bedroom is a, uh, about 1,070 square feet. So they're pretty small. And um, so the, the family had five kids. Mm -hmm. And so they had kind of outgrown a thousand square feet. They were able to go out and buy a home on the open market. And then, so by again talking about how we impact the community, they were able to move up into a home on the on the open market. We were able to place Christy in the home, which freed up a Section Eight apartment here in town. So another family was able to get secure housing. Mm -hmm. um, our home dedication. Building community, we do a lot of community events, and there's certain things that, like when we took on the pie and watermelon eating contest this last year, people said, what does that have to do with Habitat for Humanity? And it has to do with bringing the community together. <laughs> Standing side by side, and having fun, and laughing together, getting to know your neighbors. <laughs> Our beach walk, I don't have the pictures from yesterday yet. Um, we participate in a lot of community events. We're gonna be doing another Rock the Block event here coming up. Um, where we will have free recycling in our parking lot, and so yard waste and actual trash and recycling in the parking lot. Mm. So I don't have the dates yet, but stay tuned, that's coming. And how do we do it? We do it through grants, we do it through fundraising, and we try to have a little bit of fun when we can. So we raffled off this little playhouse, and a really cool story, the little boy that won the playhouse donated it to the elementary school, and it's on our elementary oh. school um, playground for all of the kids to enjoy. Um, so last year, 120 volunteers gave 10,475 hours. It's awesome. So how can you make a difference? The number one thing that you can do for us is to pray for us. Pray for... Pray for guidance, pray for opportunities, pray for our families, pray for our volunteers. Right now we're going through the family selection process and you know, it's, it's pretty emotional when you have people come in and they sit down and they talk to you and they're telling you their life stories. I usually wind up spending a little bit of time in the bathroom getting myself together afterwards because it brings tears to your eyes and it makes you realize how blessed you are and how small your problems really are. And um, Ray is on our family selection committee. I hope that's okay to share. Um, but you know, pray for him because he's meeting with these families and he's hearing their stories. And to decide that we have five families that are all equally, and to narrow it down to you know to a couple of families that they suggest to our board of directors, it's it's emotional. So so please pray for for everyone and pray for our community. Um, you can volunteer and um, financial donations as well. So I'll be around afterwards and we can talk about all of that in more detail since I kind of got carried away in the beginning. <laughs>